Welcome to our tutorial about the picture box control. Let's start by dragging a picture box control onto our application. Let's resize it a little bit. In our previous tutorial, we did see the picture box control. In this tutorial, we're going to learn more about how to manipulate this control. Let's start from the error image property. When I click on this icon, the Select Resource dialog window pops up. We've got the option to use a local resource by importing an image from our hard drive, or we can use a project resource. Right now, we don't have any project resources files or folders active and available yet. When I import a file, the project resource will appear right here. Click Import. And let's open underscore error.jpg and click Open. Underscore error now appears in my list, and I have a preview here. OK. Now the resources folder is here with our underscore error.jpg image inside it. To access resources, simply double click on my project, and you see the resources tab right here. Our image appears right here as well. I used underscore error. Because error is a reserved word in Visual Basic. If I'd imported an image with the same name as this reserved word, Visual Basic would have given me a warning. Let's import two more images. I can use the Add Resource drop down menu, or I can simply drag and drop from Windows Explorer. And as you see, these new images are now available in the Resources folder of the Solution Explorer window. How do resources work anyway? When we compile and distribute our program, the resources we import are distributed with the program. In addition to images, we can also include icons, audio files, and other types of files as resources. Let's return to our form. It looks like the error image didn't register. Now let's rename the picture box. I'm going to drag in a combo box now. I'll be using it to manipulate the properties of the picture box during runtime. At this point, I'll pause my video. And I'm back. What I've done here is create a list. I've incorporated the select case routine to manipulate the properties of the picture box. We're going to be looking at this in more detail a little bit later on. Okay, let's run our program. First, let's bring in a background image, just to see the size of our picture. Our first option is to load an image from the web. Before the image was fully loaded, we saw a splash loading. Oops, I forgot about something. Let's go back and set the initial image property. We'll select Loading and click OK. And let's run our program again. This time, when I loaded from the web, we did see just a quick splash of the image loading. This image shows temporarily before the image fully loads. We can also choose to load an image from our hard drive or load it locally. Let's bring up the background just to check the size of the picture box. We can manipulate the image box parameters, for example, image size. Let me select Stretch and Center Image. We can zoom. Let's return to normal. Let's also see how we can manipulate the background image. 
the background image layout stretch, centered, tiled, and none. Let's bring the background back. And let's tile it. Another option, in addition to image size, is auto size. This option resizes the picture box to match the size of the image. Or we can set the size of the image box and, for example, use the stretch mode. Let's stop our program to see how it's done. As I mentioned before, we've got a simple select case routine. First, we incorporate the image location property, which uses the path as a string. I just type the web address of our home page, videotutorials.net. The second example, which I did forget to show you earlier, but I'll do later, how to use the image error property. This website obviously doesn't exist, it's a bad URL. When the program can't find the image, it'll load the error image. Next, I hard coded the path to the image on my hard drive. In my next line, I set the background image using the background image from my.resources. The syntax goes like this my period resources period, and then down pops a list of available resources from IntelliSense. You can see the background, loading, and error images are right here. Once again, we'll use the background image. Next, I've used the size mode property. This property determines the size of the picture itself, but not the size of the picture box. We do have five different choices here from IntelliSense. If we want more details about these options, just click to get the pop-up display of information. We have a summary of the line of code, some details about the location, and information about where the file is stored. Double-click. Next, I set the picture box size by using the structural size method. We've covered the structural size method previously in this course. In the last block of code, we determined the background image layout. Tile, center, stretch, and so on. Once again, the visibility of the background image is determined by the background image property, and the background image layout determines the shape of the background image. Let's run our program again. Let's see what happens when I try to load an image that doesn't exist. The program loaded my error message, which is determined by the error image property. And this concludes our tutorial about the picture box control.